good morning. Welcome to our final SDBBC news report for 2020. My name is Frank Incense, and today I'm joined by my co-news reader, Chris Tingle. And we're so glad that you've tuned in for today's final broadcast. Well, I guess most of the doors on all our advent calendars have been open and the chocolates have been well and truly eaten because now they're just... So you can now officially hang up your Christmas stocking, you can wear your craziest Christmas jumpers, you can open your tin of Quality Street and Heroes, and you can sing jingle bells when you wake up first thing in the morning in your loudest possible voice. Anyway, here are our Christmas news headlines today. In farming news, a local sheep known for being a bit grumpy has given his thoughts about Christmas to one of our reporters. He was quoted as saying, Bah humbug. In decoration news, a Christmas tree ornament designer has explained what it is that keeps him designing new ornaments every year. He says he's been hooked on trees his whole life. Uh, also, environmentalists have discovered what fish sing underwater at this special time of year. They sing Christmas chorals. And finally, in Bethlehem, a donkey has been given an award for giving many years faithful service in the town, uh, giving people rides and transporting their shopping. His owner said he's a great donkey, and he, or, he, or, he always gives his very best. Well, we have some more news headlines and jokes that you, our viewers, have sent in, and we'll put those up on screen at the end of our bulletin today, so do please keep watching. Now it's now it's time for today's weather report with our weather reporter, Carol Service. Carol, what's the weather going to be like today? It's going to be lovely and warm. It's going to be really sunny. The sea is going to be lovely. If you want an ice cream, you need to eat it quick before it melts. That's because I'm on holiday in the Bahamas. And where you are? Uh, cold by any chance? You got it. Woohoo! I'm on holiday! Thanks, Carol. How lovely for you. Well, now it's time for us to catch up with our on-location reporter, Candy Kane. Candy, how are you doing? Good morning, Frank, and good morning, Chris. Well, I'm still here, I'm here in, in Bethlehem for our final Christmas countdown broadcast. It's been a busy few weeks for you. It certainly has, and I've met some really interesting people who have helped me to understand more about what happened on that very first Christmas. Just remind us who you've interviewed. Well, it all started with Simeon. Do you mean Simeon? Yes, that's the one. I could never get his name right. He told us about some promises that God made years before that God had promised to send his special, special for, for every king who would be born in Bethlehem. Then I met who told, who told us, us that Mary's baby, baby was, was going to be the king that God had promised and, and that he was actually going to be God's son. I see now why Jesus was so special. So when Jesus was born, it was the king of the universe coming to be with us. That's right. Spot on. Next, we met a local innkeeper and his wife, Rudolph and Donna Blitzen, and they had no room for Mary and Joseph at the inn. Then, of course, who could forget, we met the local shepherd, Paul Lambert. I tell you what, you could tell he was a shepherd. How? I could smell him, this sheep, from the studio. Anyway, he told us how God had sent angels to invite him and his shepherd mates to go and see Jesus. And that showed that God loves everyone. And God wants everyone to come to know Jesus. Whether you are rich or poor, king or shepherd, including you and me. Then there was the wise men who told us all about the star that God sent to guide them to Jesus which showed that, sure, there have been lots of kings over history, but that Jesus was the greatest king of all, which is why even when Jesus was just a baby, the wise men bowed down and worshipped him. Well, that's great. 
But I've got a question, Candy. What does a story that took place over 2,000 years ago have to do with us now? Well, that is the big question. And it's great to understand what happened when Jesus came. And it's great to understand how it happened and even where it happened. But the most important thing is why it happened. So why did it happen? Why did Jesus have to leave heaven and come down to earth? Is it something to do with him being a rescuing king? Absolutely. Let me explain. You know, at the moment, because we've got this horrible virus, we have to keep our distance from people, don't we? We can't go near people. That's right. We have to live with a kind of gap between us and other people. And I don't like it. Well, in a similar way, because of something else that's bad, there is a gap between us and God. A distance that's opened up between us that we have caused by the wrong things that we say, think and do. And in the Bible, this is called sin. And because God is so good and so perfect and never does anything wrong, he can't come close to sin which means, which means he, he cannot, cannot come, come close, close to, to us. us. And, and saddest, saddest of all, unless, unless our sin is taken, taken away, then, then we can't be friends with, with God, God now or forever. And is that what Jesus came to put right, to rescue us from? That's right, Frank. You've definitely had your cappuccino this morning. Well done. The great message of Christmas is that God doesn't want to keep his distance from us. He loved us so much that he wanted to create a way that we could have all the wrong things in our lives forgiven so that our sin could be taken away and we could be friends with God again. And that's what Jesus came to do to make that possible. So really, the Christmas story is the beginning of a rescue story about Jesus coming to repair our broken friendship with God. That's right. And, you know, just like we have the Orwell Bridge nearby that connects one side of Ipswich to the other side, Jesus came to be a new bridge between us and God. And the good news of Christmas is that if we ask Jesus to forgive all the wrong things we've done and repair our broken friendship with God, then he will. And we can have God as our friend now and forever. So God's forever king can be our forever friend. And he promises not just to be God with us at Christmas time, but God with us every day of our lives, being the friend who is always there, always looking after us and always loving us, always caring for us. Well, thanks, Candy. That's great. And we hope you have a safe journey back to Ipswich. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to buy us some Toblerone from the duty-free shop at the airport. Mm. Well, that's the end of our Christmas countdown. We hope you've enjoyed watching and we hope you'll keep looking into the Christmas story. And if you'd like a book to help you to do that, then do please get in contact with us. Send us your name, your address and your age and we will send you a Christmas storybook free of charge. And we also want to say a big thank you to our video producer, Gary Hazeman, for the many hours of hard work that he has put in to making all this possible. So thank you, Gary. Well done. Thanks for watching SDBBC. We're going to finish with a gingerbread Christmas video, which we hope you enjoy. And we wish you all a, a very, very happy, happy Christmas. Christmas. On that first Christmas, Mary met God's messenger, who brought news of great joy. You're having a baby boy! On that first Christmas, Joseph was in meltdown. All his plans were wrecked. He was feeling super stressed. He was just about to snap. Oh dear! Looks like he has. His wife-to-be is up the duff. The child's not his. It's all too much. When word gets out, there'll be such drama. So, chopping wood.
helps him feel calmer. Joseph plans to walk away. What on earth would make him stay? He heads off to hit the hay and as he sleeps, God speaks. Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The baby in her is from the Holy Spirit. Good news for a heart that was filled with fear. Good news of Emmanuel. God, come near. She will have a son and they will name him Emmanuel. This name means God is with us. Joseph got up and Joseph went on. Together they witnessed the birth of God's son. God's with us. They whispered while holding him tight. He's come into our chaos and into our night. For those now in meltdown whose plans have been wrecked, for all who are feeling tired and stressed, for anyone who's ready to snap and everyone that's in a flap, this is the good news we all need to hear. God is with us right now and right here. This Christmas time, please don't walk away. For God is with us and he came to stay. We can get up and we can go on, held tight by our Saviour, Jesus, God's Son. Emmanuel, his name means God is with us.